What's up, guys? This is Marcus Huskins on behalf of Groove 3, and I'd just like to take a second to welcome you to the Studio One course. Let's take a moment to talk about the chord track and what it is. First of all, if you notice up here in the top left, in addition to having our markers and our arranger track and our tempo options, we now have this new option over here, and it says Open Chord Track. We can make it visible simply by clicking this icon. In addition to that, you'll also notice that we have this follow option. And we have it currently set to on, but we can set this to off as well. Now, one thing to note about the chord track is that it's kind of similar to the tempo track in that it's a global track. But in this case, as opposed to containing tempo information for the whole entire song, we can think of the chord track as a harmonic roadmap to our entire song. Now, the interesting thing about the chord track is the way that it interacts with your Studio One song. And this is obviously dependent on a track by track basis. And the interesting thing is that it also works with audio or instrument parts or note data. So if you notice over here, as I'm selecting these tracks, we have this option over here, follow chords. On instrument tracks, we have one option. On audio tracks, we're gonna look at this a little bit later on. We've got two different options. But essentially, if we set this to a follow mode, in this case, I'm gonna use parallel, as we update or edit or revise our chord track, all of your instrument parts, the note data, is going to non-destructively follow the chord track. The interesting thing is this is also possible with audio. Like I said, we're gonna get into that in a moment, but in order to kind of understand this, let's go ahead and have a look at this. Okay, so I've got this piece over here. I'm gonna go ahead and press play. We'll mute our bass for now. Okay, so this is just some basic note data that's residing on some instrument parts over here. So now, if I wanted to extract the chord information from this instrument part, I can simply drag this up to my chord track. And you'll notice that because Studio One has direct access to all of this note data, that it was able to distinguish which chords are being played in this performance. Let's go ahead now, push play. Okay, so because the chords that we're hearing and the chords that we're seeing on the chord track are a direct relation to the instrument part, we're not hearing anything different right now. But watch this. If I was to say, take this C major, right click this, and let's turn it to a minor, I want you to keep your eye on what happens here. I'm not sure if you noticed that. Listen to it now. Okay, let's go ahead and undo that. Now you'll notice it snapped back. What about this one over here? Okay, same thing again. Let's change this to a diminished. So what's happening here is as we make any changes to the chord track, our instrument parts and our audio parts, we're gonna look at this in a little bit, are able to follow this. Now this opens up some new possibilities in terms of arranging, in terms of transposing, things like that. Let's go ahead and let's undo this. And I wanna show you something else. Let's see that we wanted to take this whole entire performance. I'm gonna shift double click to select all the notes in the chord track. And let's say I wanted to transpose this. Let's say I wanted to bring this down minus three semitones. See what happened there? Everything dropped down. Now the thing to note here is that we're not doing this on the instrument part. We're not doing this at the track level. We're doing this at a global level of the chord track. Let's go ahead, let's undo that. If you notice there, everything snapped back up. I'll redo it and then I'll undo it. So this is actually changing the information in our whole entire song. How we set this up, how we use it, how it can be used, the different use cases. We're gonna focus on that in some other videos. But for this video, I just wanted to kind of describe or showcase the way that the chord track is affecting our song. Now in the next video, we'll dive into how to set up the chord track and some different types of workflows that we can use.